What's up beautiful humans, Dan here. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down my exact seven figure content strategy, but more importantly, I'm gonna be walking you through the four big decisions you must make in regards to your content strategy so you know what to post, when to post, and most importantly, how to use content marketing across one channel or many to get clients consistently. And these have been some huge lessons that have been kind of hard fought for me because I have done the full range of different kind of content strategies over the years. Some have failed miserably, others are now working phenomenally. And I'm recording this off the back of my first ever 100K month with one VA. So I've had bigger months, uh, many bigger months in the past, but and have been over the seven figure mark for uh, three, three and a half years now. So, you know, seven figure years, six figure, multi six figure months aren't new to me. But with this new model, I've never done something so simple. Last month, we did over 100K cash collected USD for the internationals here. And uh, I did it with one part-time VA. And in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through everything I've learned about how to create client getting content. So whether you're just starting out or whether you're at uh, six figures, multiple six figures a month, I think there are gonna be some massive takeaways for you here. And at the very end of the video, I'm gonna walk you through my exact posting schedule as well as the four big decisions that you need to make for yourself in order to create that client getting content. So make sure that you stick with me. But first, let's start by talking about Sam Ovens and Alex Homozi. So let me flip back to uh, April 2018 when I first got started in business. I transitioned from the world of being a youth pastor into this online space. My business model was a mess. I was an agency owner doing some coaching, doing everything for everyone. And what was really interesting about that time is I was massively influenced by people like Brendan Michard. I was following Lewis Howes, many other people who had heavy content strategies. They had YouTube channels, they had podcasts. And so I'll never forget finishing up as a youth pastor where primarily like one of my main jobs was communicating from stage. So the idea of creating content, right, was in my blood. I was having to create kind of new talks every single week. And so I remember telling my wife, I'm going to launch a podcast. And at that stage, I was going to launch it for youth and young adults. And it was going to be called Pursuing Awesome. I know, cringe, but that's what I was gonna do. And right away, I realized that I, I really couldn't figure out how to create content and make money. <laughs> so I had I just enrolled in Sam Ovens Consulting Accelerator, and that was basically like, you don't really need to create content. What you need is a funnel. And I was like, okay, I need a funnel. And specifically, it was like a webinar or a, or a video sales letter funnel. And so I ignored all of my instincts to become this content creation machine. And instead, I stepped into the world of direct response marketing, running ads, two funnels. And to my surprise, it worked phenomenally well. And I continued on with this just kind of every now and then posting on Facebook, documenting the journey. But I wasn't creating content to get clients so much as I was building funnels and running ads to get content uh, to get clients. Then I had the massive privilege in April uh, or June of 2021. At this stage, my business had already done over a million. Uh, I'd become more established. Again, all through direct response marketing and funnels, I was only creating content when I had to create content, right? And then I had the privilege of working one-to-one -one with Alex Homozi for a few months. And what's really funny is that now, most of you who follow Alex Homozi know that he's a content creation machine, but what you may not know is that there was a day and there was a time where he thought creating content was a stupid idea. So did Sam Ovens, thought it was stupid ideas. And I'm not at all trying to bag them. Uh, we all evolve, we all change, and I, I certainly have, and they have too. And so both of them at that time, both of these really strong voices in my life, Sam was like, create a funnel, you'd wanna get off the content creation machine, Hormozy was like, you don't need to create content, you need to build a funnel, build an epic sales team, and you can scale to the moon. And both of them were right for the business models that they were trying to build and teaching kind of others like me to build as well. And so all the way into 2021, and even into 2022, I was only creating content that I had to create. And it was very direct response style content. And throughout 2021, we really started to refine this group funnel strategy. And a big core of that was content. But the nature of the content was to get people to raise their hands to respond, to nurture them enough to where they were going to want to respond to a, uh, an appointment, send a message or send a message to us and basically nurture enough to know we're not scammers. So they're not skeptical and not cynical so they can work with us. Nowhere in my strategy was it about building an audience, building a brand, building trust. It was about building a list. 
And here's what I want to uh, share in terms of a perspective that most people struggle with is that most high ticket coaches, consultants, and online creators create businesses where leads either buy or die. I want to say that again. Most people create businesses, create offers, create funnels where leads either buy or die. In other words, we run the ad, we do the post. Some people come through, they might book a call. Out of those that might book a call, some of them do. Out of those that book, some of them show. And out of those that show, some of them buy. And the rest kind of get thrown on the list, right? We might keep emailing them every now and then. But then the name of the game is to go and get more leads who might book, who might show, who might buy and so on and so forth. And one of the huge shifts over the last year for me was two things. Firstly, was really realizing that I enjoy creating content. I know that might be a foreign concept for you to kind of realize what it is you might enjoy in business because most of us are just looking for the money ROI. Well, I had figured out the money ROI and I was looking for the joy, fun, fulfillment ROI. And so the first thing I realized was I actually really enjoy creating content. Like right now, I'm sitting here, I've got some notes scribbled in front of me, I'm looking into the camera and I'm enjoying the process. Like I don't feel like, oh crap, I need to shoot a video. I'm enjoying this. That was number one realization. Number two was I was bumping into more and more people who were thinking on a longer time horizon. And in this time, I realized uh, even Sam Ovens had started talking about the power of YouTube. Hormozy had really developed and, and doubled down on this brand and this online presence uh, with, with short form content and long form content. And so it was throughout this time that my mind was starting to be opened to maybe there was more to getting clients online than just like creating these funnels where leads either buy or die, where we're just creating direct response content. And so over the last four to five months, I've started creating content both from a place of enjoyment and fun and without this deep attachment to getting clients. Like I'm not creating this video going, oh my gosh, I hope someone messages me and buys something, right? Like I'm, I'm creating this assuming no one will, and yet I just hope that it helps some people. And when I made these, these two distinctions and decisions, right? I wanna do more fun stuff in my business, and I wanna help more people with my content, whether or not they work with me, two things happened. I started having more fun, and I started making way more money, and specifically, way more profit. And the reason was is because I stumbled upon this content strategy that built massive influence with people with what we call core identity marketing. I won't go into the philosophy of it today, but I will go into the tactics. And so that's what brought me to understanding uh, what I now know about the content strategies and the content strategy I use and the content strategy we teach our clients. And so the number one first kind of decision that you need to make is understanding the phase of business you're in. Because here is the biggest mistake people make when it comes to creating content is if they decide to create any content at all, they typically look at people way further ahead than them, and then they try and do what those people are doing, right? We look at Hormozy, we look at Gary V, we look at Patrick Bet David, Ed Milet, whoever it might be, we start to try and implement, emulate these people way further ahead than us. And, and what I've understood is that there are three distinct phases that all of us will go through at some point in our journey, and, and those stages reflect the type of content and the volume of content that we should be creating. So with these phases, I've kind of come up with what I've observed over working with 800 clients is also the revenue levels that kind of correlate with these. They're not set in stone. These are just kind of my experience working with hundreds of clients in terms of what I see to be typical, okay? So phase number one is volume. And what volume is about is it's firstly kind of zero to 30K a month. And this is about really cutting your teeth on content creation. There are, and there are three distinct things you're trying to do here. The first is you're trying to develop the skills of content marketing. Now, these are typically going to fall within copywriting and video. Really simple, but most of you starting out with just creating content for the first time or in your first few months under 30K a month, you typically don't have these skills and those are the skills you're trying to develop. Copywriting and video. The second thing is you're trying to find your voice, right? When we start out, like I was like shooting videos. I remember pulling my phone out in 2018 and I was this hybrid of like uh, my favorite preacher, like my spiritual mentor, Erwin McManus and then Gary V. And it was just this mess. I was an echo, not a voice. And the volume stage is really about finding more of your voice, learning not only how to show up as an expert, but show up as like an authentic human being. And so that's the second piece of the first phase is you want to be developing your, fo your voice. And the third thing is you want to really start to understand your market. What are their pains? What are their troubles? What are their challenges? What are their dreams? What are their aspirations? What is their core identity? And in the volume stage, you're trying to stack all three of these things, right? The, the skills, the voice, 
and the awareness of your market. So you start to develop a real sense of this is what this piece of content, this is what I know is going to work. And maybe this isn't going to work. You start to get an awareness around what's actually going to hit. And in volume stage, the goal here is really simple. Put in the reps, okay? You just want to post content every single day. You're not looking for home runs. You're trying to hone these three things just through putting in the reps. So this is stage number one, typically zero to 30K month. Phase number two is what we call value. So once you've gone through this phase of developing the skills, finding your voice and developing market awareness, firstly, the journey isn't done, but you're feeling more established. And value is all, all about typically taking the gas off the pedal for doing more content and putting the gas on the pedal for doing better content content. So now it's not about so much posting every day. It's about bringing more intention to the quality of the stuff that you're putting out. So let me give you a really simple example. When I was first starting in this, I was posting every day, sometimes twice a day. Now, did I miss a day here or there? Yep. But the point is it was consistent. It was high volume. When I really started to make a stack of money through content, I was only posting two, three, maybe four times a week, but these were potent. These were longer video trainings. Maybe they were longer written, copywritten posts. But most importantly, I developed my voice. I developed some skills. I developed deep market awareness and I was now hitting more home runs. And so in the volume stage, you're focused in on one channel. And in the value stage, you can start to have like one channel, let's say plus email. I'm going to talk about channels in a moment, but we've got volume, value, and this is typically 30, and this is a big range, 30 to kind of 80, 90, 100K a month. If you do this well, you're going to get to seven figures just doing value. Now, what's really important to understand about this is this stage is not about being everywhere, doing reels and short form and email and TikTok and all the rest of it. This is about doing less, but better. You're still focused in your efforts and you're, the focus you're bringing is high quality content that hits the mark every single time. Number three, I'm gonna be brief on this because I'm only just getting to the stage now, most of you aren't here, is omnipresence. So this is when you bring valuable content to multiple channels and you're you're putting out YouTube videos and you're doing reels and you're putting in shorts and reels and TikToks and you might have email going on, you might be using Instagram and Twitter. There's so many ways that you can do it and this is typically what we're seeing with the Gary V's and the Hormozies is they are at the stage where they're bringing high value content and redistributing it across a lot of different channels. This is also where you need to invest heavily into a content team because you don't want to be creating for each individual channel. You want to be redistributing over each individual channel. So I know this is a lot of information to digest, but the thing I'm trying to make you realize here is phases exist and right now you are in one. The question is, do you know the phase you're in and are you being true to the phase you're in, not the phase you want to be in, right? Volume, zero to 30K roughly, value, 30 to 100K roughly, and then omnipresence, 100K plus. You've, you've nailed your marketing, you're incredibly good at content, you've really found your unique, your unique voice, and now you're just ramping it up with team across multiple channels. So these are the three phases. And what's really important to understand about this is that was mostly about the quality and the quantity, but now I'm gonna talk about the four types of content right? Because we've talked about the phases, but now it's like, well, what do I actually post? And this is where a lot of people get it wrong is when we think about the coaching and consulting space, we typically only post one style of content. So let me break down the four pieces here, the four different types of content that we should be posting. Teach, share, show, and give. So let me break down each one of these uh, one by one. The teach content is where most of us feel most comfortable. This is when we put our expert hat on. This is also what keeps people thinking that you're smart, but boring, right? So they might listen to you every now and then they might tune in or like something or comment on something, but there's no real deep connection being developed. They might see you as being smart. They might think that you know your stuff, but they're not the, they're not feeling a sense of no like, and trust with you. The key to having great teach content is being a painkiller, not a vitamin. So when you're trying to create teach content, and this, this video is a great example of teach content, right? For many of you, you're going, ah, oh, like it's like a light bulb moment where you're like, I didn't know this, right? And this is solving a real problem for me because for you, you're probably trying to figure out how to create content that actually gets clients. And I'm breaking down exactly what works for me and for all of our clients to get clients. So you're like, oh, this is really helpful. And that's what teach content is. But it cannot be a vitamin, like it can't be a nice to have. You can't be talking about like the, oh, that's nice. You need to be a painkiller. You need to be solving prominent pain, big needs. You need to be helping people survive. That's the key to powerful teach content. Number two is sharing content. 
So this is where you take the, the expert hat off and they put the human hat on. If you think about Hormozy for a second, Hormozy is talking about working out. He's talking about dessert. He's bringing us into his marriage. There's lots of things that are unbusiness related that he brings us into. And that's him shearing the, the, the human side. Now, that, does that diminish how we see him as an expert or does that enhance how we see him as an expert? It, hunts, it enhances it. The people we feel most connected with, we feel a personal sense of connection and respect and rapport with. And so the second type of content we want to be creating is stuff that brings people into our life, stuff that shares our experiences, our backstory, our hobbies, the things that we are into. You know, I've been laughing with a friend recently. Uh, I feel like the best ROI purchase of 2023 for me has got to be the chickens that I bought because I bought some chickens and every time I post about the chickens, I get so many DMs from people just like me who have a value for animals, who have a value for like this homestead alternative lifestyle and then makes a sense of connection, right? When you share, you start to understand that your vibe attracts your tribe, right? So it's not just about knowing all this stuff. It's about being authentic and sharing who you are online. So that's number two. Number three is show content. What we do with show content is we show the powerful work that we do in and behind the scenes. So we share case studies, client testimonials, client interviews, screenshots of clients winning. And you might not have a stack of those uh, to do right now, even though it's a very powerful form of content, you need to be focused on getting those client results ASAP so that you can continue to showcase them. Show content is also about how you showcase your unique method or mechanism, how you help people get results. It's like your process, right? So if you think about if you're a health coach, right? And you have a unique way of approaching health where maybe you uh, look at it from a hormonal perspective or a holistic perspective and you uh, help people not just uh, feel great, and lose weight, but like eat the right foods in such a way that it's sustainable, whatever it might be. Show content is about showcasing your unique method or model so people understand not just how you're better than your competitors, but how you're different. That's number three, show. Number four is incredibly powerful and important, and that is give content. So there are three types of give content. We give away assets, we give away opportunities, or invitations, and we give invitations directly to work with us. So let me break that down. They're an amazing way, especially when you're using a community funnel, which I'll break down more in a moment, where you can get people to raise their hands by offering something for free. So it might be an ebook, an SOP, a training of some kind, and you're giving it away. Another thing to do is you can give people an invitation or an opportunity, let's say, give people an op opportunity to uh, go deeper with you on a Q&A or a webinar. So you're inviting someone to something. And then there is a give style of content where you directly talk about your offer and you allow people to reach out if they would like more information. And so within these four types of content, you actually have an incredibly well-rounded content strategy that allows you to build a prolific and influential personal brand. If you skew to, let's say, the expert side and you only teach, you will have a lot of people who respect you and very few people who connect with you. Right, so you might have you might have high leads, or, or you might have high sense of like respect and interest from people, but low conversion into clients because people don't have that personal sense of connection. On the flip side, if all you do is share about your life, right, like an influencer, like here's what I mean for breakfast, here, uh, here are my chickens, whatever it might be. People might feel a, a beautiful sense of connection with you, but don't respect you as a leader. And so you're getting a lot of engagement, but it's not translating into business. And it's not until you start to incorporate all four of these pieces of, of content, the style of content, teach, share, show, and give, that you really start to build out this well-rounded personal brand that builds a community and turns that community into calls, clients, and cash. So this is the second big thing that I wanted to cover. First, we talked about the three phases. Then we talked about the four types of content. Now let's talk about marketing channels. And this is not going to be theory. This is going to be incredibly practical. Okay. When it comes to channels, the biggest mistake I see people make under seven figures, so under hundred K a month, let's say, is they do too many channels too soon, right? Now there's there's a lot more than that business wide that people make mistakes in, like they have too many offers, they don't really know who they serve, all of that. But from a marketing perspective, the biggest mistake I see people make is they try and go too wide too soon. And they've got Facebook and a Facebook group and Instagram and TikTok and a YouTube channel, a podcast, and they're spinning their wheels, wondering why they can't get traction. And the important thing is, is that Tony Robbins says, where attention goes, energy flows. <laughs> That's the quote. Where attention goes, energy 
flows. Now you have limited attention, right? And you've got limited energy. And so my biggest piece of advice to people under 100K a month is to focus in on one main channel. We call this the community funnel. There is psychology behind it, and I won't get into it right now, but it's more than just a fancy marketing term. A community funnel is a place where leads have a face and a name, and you can interact with them, and they can interact with one another. So um, some examples of my favorite platforms and channels for community funnels is Facebook profile, Facebook group, uh, school group, um, Instagram, and Twitter. Now, YouTube can be like this, although you need huge volume to achieve it, right? Like I know many people that have a million plus subscribers that are under seven figures in their business. It doesn't really translate super well if that's your only channel. And then you can use email. But again, email is a very challenging place because, you know, it's hard to connect with someone called surfergirl79 at yahoo.com right? Like it's not the same as being able to message Susie Bryan or Bob Jones on Facebook. And so choosing the right channel to build a community is an incredibly important thing to do. Now for me, my strategy is focused in on Facebook. Now I'll be really honest. Facebook is not my favorite platform to hang out on. <laughs> it's not. I really enjoy Instagram, but I've built a really decent following on Facebook. And right now in this stage in 2023, Facebook is still the best place to build an organic following. LinkedIn can also be used. I'm not a personally a fan of LinkedIn, but LinkedIn I would add into the community funnel space. So let me recap. You need a community funnel, right? Facebook, Facebook profile, uh, Facebook group, Instagram, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, or school. Some of these kinds of platforms. Community funnel. Now, what becomes incredibly powerful is when you add a community funnel with YouTube. Let me explain why. For a long time, I've been posting on Facebook really consistently. I post short short videos, long videos, uh, short posts, long posts, and throughout that process, I have built a really decent audience. But the way that algorithms work is it's very hard to allow someone to binge your content, right? They can go to your profile and they can scroll through manually and things like that. But one of the things that I saw happening with clients who were already doing this, they saw in the market is people really wanted to go deep and be able to go deep fast because what was happening with Facebook is I realized someone had to follow me and then they followed me for, had to follow me for a really long time, like weeks and months and sometimes years to really get it, like I would say indoctrinated. <laughs> it's not, not, not the bad sense, but like the, that sense of connection, right? And they would have to follow me for a really long time to see all the posts, right? It's hard to dig around Facebook and find what you're looking for. When I paired my Facebook profile community funnel with YouTube, right? So there was this place that I got to uh, create shorter form content, right? Shorter videos, shorter posts, organically growing my profile all the time. And then I pointed them towards a place where they went deep, where they watched videos like this. It was like magic. People could now go deep with me fast. I now regularly get, I would say almost every day right now, I get messages from people not only saying, I watched this video, it was great, but saying, I've watched all your videos on YouTube. This is amazing. How can I work with you? And I've literally in five years of business never experienced anything like it. So it's been this absolutely phenomenal thing. And so what I'm trying to share is you need to pick your channel and you need to have two different places, one that's more shallow and one that's deep, one that's short form and one that's long form. So you might have Instagram and you might be doing Instagram reels and Instagram stories and Instagram newsfeed posts, but you want to pair that with something like YouTube or a podcast where people can binge and go deep. You might have a Facebook group, but Facebook group is not the place for people to go really, really deep. It's very hard. The players in there aren't great. Like if you exit the Facebook app, you can't listen to uh, you know a training in the background where YouTube you can. And so peering a community funnel with a place where they can go deep, peering short form video content with long form video content, short form written content with long form video content or long form audio content is a powerful, powerful tool. And so I really want to encourage you that as you're thinking about your own content strategy, you need to identify what out of the three phases, what phase are you in? What phase do you find yourself in? And then number two, are you hitting all four types of content, right? And I'm going to share in a moment my specific posting schedule and strategy, but I'm just trying to give you the headlines right now. So are you hitting all four types of content? Are you positioning yourself way too much as a friend where people are liking your stuff, but not respecting you as a leader they want to work with? Or are you positioning yourself only as an expert where people respect you, but don't want to work with you, right? Because they don't, haven't connected with the human side. So you're going to be hitting all four. The third piece is you've got to choose your channel. 
my vote based on my experience, which is not a perfect experience. I don't have perfect advice. I just have the advice that's helping me make almost uh, well, on track to make seven figures profit this year. Very, very simple strategy is a community funnel paired with a long form content strategy. So in my case, right now it's Facebook profile and YouTube. Maybe one day it will be Instagram profile and YouTube, okay? The next piece here is very, very important before I share my specific content strategy is you need to figure out how to create content for others and for yourself. So if you think about two circles that overlap and you've got you in one circle and others in another circle, and then you've got the place where they meet in the middle, the mistake a lot of people make is they go one side or the other. You're either so busy trying to help people with your content that you've lost sight of what it is you wanna talk about. And so you might be effective in your marketing, but you might be burning out because the emotion that's driving you is just one where you're trying to get an ROI out of business. Or the flip side is I see people who don't give a crap at all about the content they're posting in terms of how it helps people. It's kind of just like a journal and they're just like sharing whatever it is they want. And neither are effective. You need to find the sweet spot that serves people and that is fun for you. And the reason why it's important to find something that's fun for you is because fun equals sustainable. You do not just want to have a content strategy that you can do for a week or a month or even a year. If you see yourself in the space long-term, you need to find a way to do it that is sustainable for you. And truth be told, I feel like I'm only just discovering that in the last six months. I'm now excited to create content. It's a very new feeling for me because previously I was like, oh my gosh, I need to book calls and I need to give out setters, leads to our setters. I need to like generate revenue. We're now I'm completely unattached from that. And it's because I'm just focused on like what's helpful and what I want to talk about and creating those things. So I'm hoping you're hanging with me. We're about to land the plane. Let me walk you through my exact content system. So I'm at seven figures a year, so keep this in mind. I'm gonna talk about what I'm doing and what I'm gonna start doing more just for the educational side of it. I'm not saying you should do this, I'm saying this is what I'm doing. So every week, I post four to five times on my Facebook profile. These are newsfeed posts, and then every story, every day I'm posting on my stories, my Instagram and Facebook stories. I didn't really mention Instagram. I get a handful of clients, uh, you know, every, a, a, month, a month or two from there. It's not a huge platform for me other than I enjoy it, but I have an app that syncs both, or I have a setting that syncs both uh, Instagram stories and Messenger stories. So trying to get into the details for you, uh, <laughs> don't, don't wanna leave any stone unturned. So my content strategy every week is typically five days of posting newsfeed content. My strategy is teach, share, show, give, share, right? Teach, share, show, give, share. So I'm not doing too many give posts, right? I'm not doing too many social proof posts on my newsfeed and I'm sharing a lot about my life, right? Because I'm in the stage of business where like I have so much expert content that really I'm trying to balance it out with that sense of connection. And the more I balance it out, the more people know I'm not just smart, but they can develop a sense of connection with me, which is really important. So that is my content strategy. Now, I feel like I'm in a value stage. So I'm not trying to post stacks. And so sometimes I might post three times in a week, but I make sure that those posts really resonate and really hit, okay? With stories, I am like have no plan with stories other than I post them consistently. And I would say you can absolutely plan it down to the detail and the day, but stories for me are really fun. I pull out my phone, I take photos of a cow next door, I take photos of chickens, I share some thoughts on business, I share some thoughts on life, I share client results. For me, it's a really fun stream of consciousness place that I'm not taking too seriously. And ironically, the less seriously I take it, the more fun I have with it, the more productive, if you put, if you will, or, or effective it is for me, okay? So we've got four to five posts a week on my newsfeed, right? Then I'm doing stories. And stories really allow uh, people to kind of feel a sense of connection with you because you're bringing them into the behind the scenes of your life. Now from here, um, I've just hired a head of content. So this is my only full-time person now in my business. They're gonna help me post three times a week on YouTube. Now, ironically, I create three videos a week. We just don't post three videos a week. Hopefully by the time you're watching this, we are. And it was because there's like the thumbnail and the headline and stuff like that. And I'm in a stage of business. I can't be bothered with any of that. So I literally want to shoot this video, upload it to the cloud and have someone else take care of it for me. So quick recap, Facebook profile, community funnel, five posts a week, stories every day, only when I want to post them, and then three videos a week. They'll range from 10 minutes to 30 minutes, and I'm only talking about things that that cover that circle, right? Things that'll help people, things that I'm excited to talk about. So I will never shoot a video I don't care about. Even if I think it'll do well, if I'm not excited to shoot it, I don't do it. 
And then the thing in the background is email. Now I have an email list of about 10,000 people from all of my days of running ads. And so I literally just email the list when I drop a new video. Email is not a huge thing for us. It's definitely was incredibly helpful when we had a team of setters and closers. Uh, and so if you have that, then using email consistently to drive calls to the calendar is very helpful. But now I literally just use uh, email to drive people to the video. Now here's a really important distinction. I am not trying to use YouTube to grow my audience. Very important distinction because I'm trying to give you the thinking behind what I'm doing. The biggest mistake I see people make is they use YouTube and they're trying to reach a new audience. And I don't know if you've tried to do that before. It's incredibly difficult. It's not impossible. Lots of people do it all the time. But in terms of like uploading videos and actually reaching hundreds and thousands of views of people that are not in your audience that are a brand new audience is very hard. So I couldn't care less if any strangers come across my YouTube channel. The only thing I'm trying to do is nurture people in my community funnel. Does that make sense? So my community funnel is a place that I view my community and I'm constantly building that through content and through audience growth. And then I'm nurturing those same people with YouTube content. So I'm literally posting on my stories and my newsfeed saying, hey guys, go check out the YouTube video. Maybe that's exactly how you got to be here today. And so I had someone the other day that was calling me a scammer, which ironically doesn't happen all that much, but they were calling me a scammer because they went to my website and my website was broken. <laughs> they were like, I tried to book a call. The link wasn't there. And then I was like, oh yeah. And I explained my content strategy and he's like, yeah, I don't believe you because you only have 300 subscribers on YouTube, right? And you only have, you know, however many views. And I was explaining to him that like, hey, I have a community over here that I'm just pushing to YouTube. So it's not about me growing the YouTube channel. It's about me deepening the connection with my existing audience. And so now I have, let's say a few thousand people that feel a deep sense of connection with me because I'm really nurturing them with a lot of content, right? Hitting those four, four areas, teach, show, share, give. And they've got short content from me and long content from me. And so this is my exact strategy. And over the next six months, what I'll be doing is ramping up more YouTube content. And I'll still be creating these three videos as well as then repurposing other videos. So taking Q and A calls I'm doing, doing maybe some more vlog style stuff. If you guys want to see more of that, let me know. Um, and really just ramping up and stepping into that third phase I described, omnipresence. So I'm going to be looking at short form content and all of that. But I'm letting you into my thinking to know that I'm at six and a half million in sales deep. And I'm only now going, okay, I might now start posting on different platforms. And it's because it's taken this long to stack the skills, right? Find my voice, really uh, understand my market to a deep place where my content is really effective almost every single time I post. So let me land the plane here because I know this is getting a bit long. There are four, four things that you need to think about with your content cadence that whether you're at 5K a month, whether you're at 50K a month, whether you're at 500K a month, I'd really challenge you to think through these things. Number one is identify your phase. No Know your phase. Don't try to be somewhere you're not. Identify where you are. Stick with that. If you're in volume, do the reps, stack the skills, hone your voice, understand your market. If you're in value, channel that voice and those skills and that market knowledge into really banger home run style content pieces that hit the mark almost every single time. And if you're in omnipresence, build a team, <laughs> develop the redistribution strategy so you don't have to work harder, but you're working smarter. So that's number one is know your phase. Number two, pick your channels. If you are currently under 100K a month and you're on multiple channels, that's probably why you're under 100K a month. Pick a channel, have a community funnel, create shorter form content, and then create a YouTube channel or a podcast that has longer form content where you can point people to it and it becomes this beautiful circle of people in your community going to check out your long form content and so on and so forth. Number three, make sure that you're varying your content. Very important that you vary your content. Teach, show, share, give. The easiest way to do this is to audit your content once a month, to look at everything you've posted on newsfeed stories and YouTube, and really ask yourself, am I skewing one way or the other? Are you making way too many action posts and give posts where you're just like asking people to comment below and asking people to work with you? Are you only posting teach content? right? Where you've got your expert hat on. Are you only posting live content? So you want to look at that. And then number four, and this will uh, go over the heads of many people. And I don't mean that in the condescending way, but if you don't feel the pain yet, you probably will. You need to make it fun. And, and I cannot overstate how much easier it is to make a lot of money when you make the way you make money be fun. <laughs> if you have to kick into this like caffeinated cortisol adrenaline out mode to create content or to you know book sales calls and to, to sell stuff 
It is not sustainable, my friend. I've been there, I've burned out because of it, and my life and my business is infinitely better when I decided to make it about my happiness. You've got to do what you love, right? And really ask yourself, am I building my life around my business or am I building my business around my life? And when I did the latter and not the former, life got better and ironically, business got bigger. So with that being said, I'm hoping this is helpful. If you have any questions at all, do not hesitate to drop them below and I'll see you in another video. Much love.